So we're going to start with this example. We're actually going to look at this example several times today. So it's a, uh, an example of a randomized field experiment in Baltimore, actually, elementary schools in Baltimore, and uh, where they have this intervention trying to reduce the aggressive, disruptive behavior of students. So in this example, we have a, a treatment variable, which is an intervention to try to reduce the aggressive, aggressive disruptive behavior. We have the baseline aggression, so the aggression in grade one, which we call AG1 for short, and the interaction between the, in, uh, the treatment and the baseline aggression, TX AG1, and the outcome variable is the aggression in grade five, or disruptive aggressive behavior. I'm going to call it aggression for short. So a story here, why would we want to include the interaction here? Uh, this is a very basic example, but I'm, I will try to give you stories so you can kind of motivate what we're doing. And for example, it might be the case that people that have a high baseline aggression uh, benefit more from the treatment than those who have very low uh, baseline aggression. And that's kind of reasonable. If you don't have any aggression, then the treatment can't really reduce it, right? So it's, it's reasonable that the baseline interacts with the treatment. All right, so how do we set this up then? In M plus. Oh, sorry. First, let's look at some some uh, uh, some formulas for this. And this is just uh, th these three lines is just a rearranging of terms here. Really, uh, the second and the first one we're just acknowledging that T X AG one is simply the product of the two variables. So we say that T X AG one is simply the product of the treatment variable T X and the baseline aggression AG one. And since we then have T X in two places, uh, we can take it out or factor it out and write uh, Tx, and then with this whole thing in front of it, which we refer to as the moderator function. So you can think about it as the slope of the treatment, the treatment effect, but in this case, the treatment effect is a function of your value of the baseline aggression, right? So if beta 3 here is anything else than 0, then what value you have on your aggression, your baseline aggression, will affect how the treatment affects you. All right, so I think we'll go straight ahead for the input. So we'll see a lot of input files today, and I will talk through them in various levels of detail. The first one I'm going to cover in detail now, so just make sure that everyone is on the, right, on the same track here. Uh, so the first thing you need to know about an impl input in M plus is that it's not case sensitive. You can mix uh, capital and small letters as you want to, but as a convention, uh, the M plus team has chosen to write all the M plus syntax in capital letters, just to make it easier to read. So everything that is M plus syntax is in capital letters, and everything that is user specified or names given by the user is small letters. Uh, and the second thing is that every line ends with a semicolon. And I think probably all of you know this, but I just want to make sure. Uh, so in this case, we start with the title command, and a command is always followed by a colon. So title and then the colon. And this is just a name of uh, this analysis. So this is the name you will be, have, be having on the, all the outputs that you get. So just to keep track of what you have if you have a lot of output files. And then we have the data command, in which we use the file option. And here you see file is a M plus syntax, so it's in capital letters. Hopkins.dat is just a data file, which the user or the one who collected the data is given the name. So in this case, we say file equals Hopkins.dat, and that means we're going to use a data file that is called Hopkins.dat. And it's actually implied in this case that this file is in the same folder as the input, because we have not specified any path. But if it was not in the same folder as the input, we could simply specify the path. And then we come to the variable command, in which we can give, by the names option, we can give name to the columns of the data set. So we can give each variable in the data set a name. So in this case, the first column of the file hopkins.dat is the gender variable. And the second one is the design 11. And the third one is SCTA 15, and so on. And then followed by that uh, option, we can use the use variables option. And in this option, we choose what variables we want to use in the analysis. So we might have tons of variables in the data set, for example. We might only want to use a few in the analysis. The ones we want to use, we have to specify on the use variables list. So these can either be variables that are in the data file or new variables that we define in this, in this input. So in this case, you see that uh, ag5, ag1, tx, and tx, ag1 it's not on the names list, which means that we will have to define these variables. Uh, and besides choosing what variables to use, we can also choose what observations to use. So we might only want to use a subset of the sample. So in this case, we want to use the subset of the sample where gender equals 1, and this is males in this case, and where the design 11 variable is equal to 1, 2, 3, or 4. So this is a subset of the data, essentially. 
so we can, we can do that in all sorts of various ways. And the second command is the define command, in which, one we, in which command we can rescale or transform variables or create functions of uh, variables. And in this case, now we know that we will have to create these variables, right? Because they're not on the names list and we're going to use them. So we, we define ag5 as SCTA15 divided by 10 and ag1 as SCTA11F divided by 10. So this is the aggression variables in the original data set. We re just rescale them by a factor of 10 here. And the reason why we do that is to keep the variance between 1 and 10, which is something that is usually recommended within M plus to get the best numerical performances. Uh, and then we go on and create the tx variable, which is the treatment variable, according to, ex to the example. And we create that by the if-then statement. So we say if the design 11 variable is equal to 4, then the treatment variable should be equal to 1. So if it's equal to 4, then the treatment should be equal to 1. And if the design 11 is equal to 1, 2, or 3, then the treatment variable should be equal to 0. So apparently this design 11 variable is not exactly a treatment variable. We have to redefine it as a, treat a binary treatment variable. And then finally, we use the center um, option here to center uh, aggression 1. And this is done to, uh, and we use the grand mean for that. So you can read this line as center the variable ag1 with the grand mean. And the grand mean is opposed to the group mean, which you could use if you would have a two-level model, for example. I'm not going to talk about that now. But why we do it in this case is to make the uh, interaction interpretation easier. And then finally, we create the interaction variable, which is tx ag1, which is simply then the product of these two variables. And as you can see, we center ag1 before we create this interaction variable. And that's, that's how we do it always. We never center the, the interaction variable. We center the variables before we create the interaction variable. And then we use the, in the analysis command, we specify the estimator. We can specify a lot of things here, but now we specify the estimator. And the default estimator is the maximum likelihood in M+. But in this case, we say MLR for maximum likelihood robust, which will give us robust standard error estimates. So it won't affect the point estimates, but the standard error estimates. So this is robust against some form of uh, non-normality and some forms of model misspecifications. And in this case, AG5 is a very skewed variable. And that's what we do in this case. You, you can't see that, of course. But have to trust me, I guess. Uh, so we move on to the model command there, in which we can specify the regression that we want to look at. So in this case, we want to regress ag5 on the treatment variable, the baseline regression, and the interaction between these three. So ag1 on, regressed on. On is just short for regressed on. tx, ag5, ag1, and tx, ag1. And you see these things within parentheses. These are just labels for the parameters in this model, for the, for the estimates, really. So we, what we say here is that, uh, the name of the slope of aggression, one, uh, aggression 5 regressed on Tx is B1. We just call it B1. It's a name. So whenever you have something in parenthesis after uh, a variable, in, uh, the, an independent variable in regression, it's just a name for the slope. So we give them the names. And why we have three different rows here is because you can only state one, give one label per row in, in M+. But you see that the, this whole statement is ended by semicolon. So it will still be read as one regression by M+. Plus. And why do we name these uh, slopes then? Well, in the model constraint, we're going to create functions of these parameters. So the model constraint can be used for a lot of things. We're actually going to use it for a lot more advanced things than this. But essentially what we want to do is we want to calculate the treatment effect for different values of the moderator. So the moderator here is the baseline aggression, right? So we want to see what is the treatment effect if I have a high value of the baseline aggression, if I have high baseline regression, what if I have the mean of the baseline regression, what if I have below the mean on the baseline regression. So what I create here is first I say I want to create three new parameters, mod low, mod zero, mod high. And as you can see here, we have essentially the moderator function that we talked about on the previous slide here. So we have beta 1 plus beta 3 times a value. And this value is minus 1.06 is one standard deviation of the aggression 1 variable. So it's one standard deviation below the mean of the aggression, the baseline aggression variable. And then we have mod zero, which is the, the treatment effect when the mediator, oh, sorry, when the, uh, when the baseline regress, aggression is at zero. And zero is the mean, right? Because we center this variable. So ag1 has the mean zero now because it's a centered variable. So this is at the mean of the aggression one variable, what is the treatment effect then? And finally, one standard deviation above the mean. And then in addition to this, uh, we can ask for 
output, and we, of course, there's a very rich default output for each analysis in M+, but you can always ask for more, kind of. There's a lot of information that you can get. So in this case, we ask for SAMP stat, which is sample statistics, and we ask for patterns, which is missing data patterns. We ask for standardized results, which will give us the standardized results, and also R-square for this model, and residuals, which will give us information about residuals. And finally, we ask for plot type equals plot three, which will, will give us all the available plots for this analysis. All right, so let's look at the output then. And just giving you a quick guide to the output, if you haven't seen one before, you have the first column with all the names of the, uh, what regression and what parameter you're looking at. So ag1 regressed on tx, these are the slopes. You have the intercept, the residual variance, and also the three new parameters that we defined in the model constraint command on the previous, on the input. And then the second column is the point estimate, and you have the standard error estimate, the estimated divided by the standard error, which would correspond to a Z score if, or Z score if the normal assumptions are fulfilled, and then the p-value according to that Z score. Uh, so you, as you can see here, the treatment effect and the baseline aggression effect on the aggression 5 is significant on the 5% level. And we will use the 5% level if nothing else is stated, just to have some convention for that. Uh, but the interaction variable is not significant. So there seem to be no significant interaction effect here. However, if we look at the new additional parameters, we can see that the point estimate of the treatment effect changes with the value of the um, baseline regression, so with the value of the moderator here. When the moderator is low, you have minus 0.21, when it's at the mean of aggression, you have minus, point zero, minus point zero point 0.28. And finally, at the high one standard deviation above the mean, you have uh, minus 0 0.35. However, only the middle one is significant here, as you can see. And that's because it's not only the, interac uh, not only the, the treatment effect that increases, also the standard error here. You see that the standard error is smallest at the mean of the uh, moderator. Um, yes. All right, so let's look at, I mean, this, was, this will give us uh, some kind of feeling for how the, the moderator affects the treatment effect, right? So how, how it moderates the effect. But this is only for three values. Of course, we could have specified a lot more values here. We could create, for a lot of different values of the moderator, we could create this uh, or evaluate this moderator function. Another simpler way to do this is to use this syntax. So the same model, we give names to the slopes. But now in the model constraint, we use the loop option. So this is a nice feature to make this kind of uh, analysis easier. So what we say here first is we want to create a variable that is, we call x. We want to loop that. So we want to create a vector of x values, really, from minus 1 to 1 with the increment 0 0.1. So from minus 1 to 1 with the increment 0 0.1, which will give us then 20 values, essentially. And then we say we want to plot something here. We want to plot effect, which is something that we will define. And effect, in this case, is then the moderator function at different values here. So x will take all the values from minus 1 to 1 with the increment 0 0.1 here. So we're just making a loop here, evaluating this at, instead of just uh, three values, as we did in the model constraint. We now do it at 20 values. And we will get a plot of this, and this plot that we see. And actually, we will get a smooth plot of this. So we don't see each point. We just see. Uh, lines from this. So what we have here is the point estimates. So it's a line over these point estimates. And this is the standard, uh, sorry, the confidence intervals, the 95% confidence intervals for these effects. So you can see here, we have the moderator on the x-axis here. So the baseline aggression on the x-axis and the effect on the y-axis. So you can see as the aggression increases, the negative effect increases. So the negative effect, which means, uh, which lowers than the um, the aggression in, in grade five, right? So uh, if you have a high value of the baseline aggression, you benefit more from the treatment effect. But as we can see also, it's not significant for all values of the, uh, of the moderator. So for some values, the confidence interval covers zero here. But for a part of the uh, span of the baseline aggression, we have significant effect here. <coughs> 